Hi everybody, it's me Whitney. This is my third video for my booktube channel All the Shelves. And even though it's the middle of January and I might be behind a little bit, I wanted to give you my top 10 favorite novels of 2015 so that you could get an idea of what kind of reader I am, what kind of books I like to read, and what kind of books are resonating with me, perhaps some themes that are resonating with me. This is my video for my number 10 favorite to my number 6 favorite. I didn't want to make the video too long, so I'm dividing it into two. So here are my 10 through 6 favorite <laughs> books of 2015. My number 10 favorite book of 2015 was called The Girl Who Slept With God by Val Berlinski. This book was about a extremely religious family, they're Christian, and one of their daughters goes off to South America to serve a kind of service mission. She comes back a couple months later, miraculously pregnant. She says that the baby is God's baby and that she is like the next Virgin Mary. Nobody believes her, including her very religious family. Everyone knows that this story is bullshit and that this girl is just trying to cover things up or perhaps that she's mentally ill, but they just can't deal with it. And so the family sends the daughter, the pregnant daughter and her little sister off to some house on the outskirts of town and makes them live by themselves for like a year. The father provides them with supplies and comes and visits them and there's a kindly neighbor but basically these girls are on their own going to high school and trying to negotiate their burgeoning sexuality on their own without any sort of family influence. Um, a lot of people that I talked to about the book found the premise quite unrealistic and I can understand that. It does seem a little bit weird that a family would just send their teenage daughters off to fend for themselves, but in the context of the book and when you get to know the family very quickly actually over a couple chapters, it does seem really realistic that they would actually do this and that they're, they're so religious that anything that doesn't fit into their view of the world is going to be too upsetting and they just can't deal with it. Part of the reason that I really loved this book was because I personally related to it. I too am from a very religious family that kind of desperately had to hold on to their belief system so tightly that it caused a lot of tension when I was growing up as a teenager. So I didn't really feel like the premise was that unrealistic. Not that I would be sent away to live on my own. I mean, I had a very loving, great family, but um, the the experience that I had growing up in a religious family and then not being religious anymore really prepped me for loving this book. The other thing I really liked about it was that it was a coming of age story and I love girls coming of age stories especially when there are two sisters that are coming of age together and how that is um, full of tension and um, sometimes funny, sometimes really tragic relationships between the two girls. The book never takes the easy way out. There are some character types that show up, and I don't want to give away spoilers, but there are character types where you're thinking, oh, it's going to be one of these books, but constantly she's undercutting those stereotypes and giving us something new. So I really loved this book. Again, it's called The Girl Who Slept With God by Val Berlinski. My ninth favorite book of 2015 was True Grit by Charles Portis. I had never read a Charles Portis novel even though I continually hear about what a master he is of writing. Um, so it was really exciting to read this one because I had also seen both adaptations and I loved both adaptations equally but for different reasons. Um, I loved the John Wayne one and I loved the Coen Brothers one. They were both great movies. The story is about a 14 year old girl who narrates the book. She um, uh, finds out that her father has been murdered and so she tries to recruit a couple people to help her find the man who murdered her father and get her revenge. She's precocious and she is full of like they say, true grit. She's uh, violent, she's not afraid of violence, but she's also deeply moral. I just really liked this book. It was a great reading experience and uh, I read it in one sitting and I just loved True Grit. My eighth favorite book of the year was Kindred by Octavia Butler. Octavia Butler is another author that has published prolifically and has gets a lot of critical praise and I have never read her so I was really excited to pick up Kindred. Love it so much and now I have an author to read 
um, all the way through. I've read a few of them by now, but Kindred is still my favorite of last year. It was about an African-American woman who suddenly, on the first page, is wrenched out of her contemporary time, I think it's the 70s, and she is thrown back to antebellum slavery days, um, and she saves this young white boy that is drowning and uh, has to, and, and has to um, justify her actions and her presence and the fact that she's wearing pants <laughs> in this new world. I think what I loved so much about this book was that it kind of struck me with how much privilege I have that I am not always aware of. You always hear that question about, you know, oh, if you could time travel to any time, where would you go and why? And from my perspective, there are a number of opportunities to go see really interesting things in the world that happened, and I am very interested in different historical time periods. And even though I'm a woman and that presents its own challenges, if I were just thrown into a lot of these periods, I would actually be okay, you know? And you never really think about that from other perspectives, at least I don't. And the fact that I don't, I think, is really unethical, and um, this, this book very forcefully reminded me of that. That. So she, when she's thrown back in between the time periods, she doesn't get any choice in the matter and she finds out that she is intricately connected, and I won't say how, but she's really connected with this boy that she saved. And you watch as he starts as like a kind of um, innocent, politically naive child and grows into a slaveholder and what that actually looks like. So it is intersectional, it is um, empathetic and sympathetic sympathetic while still being forceful and scary and horrific. So I would definitely recommend Kindred. You've probably read it already. I was way behind on this one, but Octavia Butler in general, Kindred specifically, it was a great book. One of my very favorites of the year. My seventh favorite book of the year was Straight Man by Richard Russo. I am part of the academy, I guess. I'm a grad student. I, I consider myself kind of part of the academy when I teach these courses and I have to go to all these meetings. So reading a book which picks apart that academic culture was so satisfying and so cathartic to me. The story is just about this kind of like curmudgeonly professor who has a famous father who has written one book and is really trying to live up to the reputation of his father and trying to um, stay relevant in an academic atmosphere. He has to attend committee meetings and um, he has to justify himself to himself and to the department. It is so good. Everybody, every type of academic is represented at these committee meetings. There's, you know, the the uh, artistic poet type. There's the guy who's completely given up and there is the guy that is only focused on his own work and research and doesn't give a shit about teaching and there is the guy that cares way too much about teaching and how much like his students love him uh, at the expense of his actual output. I felt like I was sort of gossiping with the other grad students in my department about all of these types with Richard Russo too. Um, and the story takes place over one week. I wouldn't say there are any really big plot points. Um, it's pretty realistic and steeped in real academic culture and I think that's why I liked it so much because he was taking the mundane and pointing out the ridiculousness of all this minutia that I go through every day that I did, you know, you don't always step back and realize that it's completely ridiculous. So that was Straight Man by Richard Russo. My number six book of 2015 was A Spool of Blue Thread by Ann Tyler. I feel like not enough people talk about Ann Tyler and I know that sounds crazy because she's a big best-selling author and she's always nominated for all these awards. A Spool of Blue Thread was nominated for the National Book Award. She gets accolades but among the people I know and um, even on booktube and in a lot of different forums, people don't give her the love that she deserves. She is one of my very favorite authors. She writes beautifully about domestic situations. She is a master at talking about family dynamics and the tensions and conflicts that arise between family members, whether those are giant and very 
important to the overall structure of the family or whether those are minuscule and you know they might be important to one person in the family but not another it's just it's brilliant the way that all of her characters interconnect Spool of Blue Thread is about a family living in Baltimore there's there's one very difficult child that everybody has to deal with and accommodate and he is always the one that is like storming out of the room I mean I feel like every family has one of these he's the one that's really touchy and sensitive and that you have to be afraid of stepping on his toes. There is another family member who is almost the complete opposite, always wants to take everything on himself, provide for everybody else, and accommodate everybody else, and in doing so is like slightly annoying. And then there are daughters, and there are parents, and there are grandparents, and you just see how this family was built, how they interact, and how families can uh, influence each other. It's just, it's a beautiful novel. I would really, really recommend picking up Anne Tyler if you haven't already. I would actually, this is only my sixth favorite book of the year, which is still really high, um, but if you have never read Ann Tyler before and you're looking for a place to start, I would really, really recommend Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant. That is one of my very favorite books of all time. It is so good. Um, Breathing Lessons is also very good. Accidental Tourist is good. Um, I haven't read yet her Shakespeare retelling that I think isn't out yet. Maybe that's why I haven't read it. But it's coming out this year where she retells um, Taming of the Shrew and it's, I think it's called Vinegar Girl. I'm very much looking forward to that one too. This book, A Spool of Blue Thread, excellent. Number six favorite of the year. Really, everybody should check this one out. That's my list of number 10 through to number six of my very favorite novels of 2015. I will be back in a few days with my number five through number one favorite novels. I hope that some of you have read some of these books and can talk to me about them. I was really excited about reading them and I am really excited about hearing what you had to say about those books too. So I will see you later.